Hello and welcome to the Wirework Ring tutorial. In this project we'll be learning how to create this beautiful wirework ring. So we're going to be working with two different gauges of wire and the beautiful Swarovski octagons. So if we have a little look at what you're going to be getting. So you've got your two different gauges of silver plated round copper wire. So our first gauge is the heavier gauge and that's a 0.8 millimeter gauge. So the second lot of wire is again silver plated round copper wire but you can see this is a, a 0.4 millimeter wire so you can see this is a little bit thinner. You've got your ring mandrel and you've got your two lots of Swarovski crystals in the octagon shape. So you've got your burgundy and your tanzanite colour. So the tools we'll be using as well alongside our ring mandrel are our yellow handled side cutters snips, our blue handled round nose pliers and our red handled chain nose pliers. So our starting point is we're going to be cutting and working with the heavier gauge wire. So to start we're going to have a little think about the ring size that we want to make. So you've got lots of sizes on your ring mandrel. So what you would do is you would find the size that you were that's marked down on the ring mandrel. I'm going to take a little scrap of the wire or you could use a piece of string if you wanted to. And we're just going to wrap that around the ring mandrel all the way to find the length that we'll need. So if I were a size M, I'm going to take the wire all the way there, just open out, I'm going to cut there. So now I know that to create a ring for a size M, I'm going to need to do a weave that we're going to learn now to this length. So I'm going to keep that little guide just by the side of me and I'll keep referring back to it. So to create the ring shank, this section at the back, we're going to be working with our two lots of wire and we're going to be weaving with the finer 0.4 on top of the 0.8. So our starting point is going to be, I'm going to take the wire and start to straighten it while it's still on the reel. I'm just going to run it through my fingers. It's just going to get rid of any kinks and just nice so that it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to measure and cut out three sections of wire of about, about 10 inches or so, or about 25 centimetres. And I want three, three lengths. So I'm going to use my cutters. So I've got my three structural wires. And again, I'm going to just going to take them and put them through my fingers so they're nice and straight. So my, those are my base wires. So they're all ready. I'm then going to take my finer gauge wire, my 0.4. I'm going to find the end. And for this, I'm going to take probably about 50 centimetres or so. So I'm going to keep going until I've got around about 50 centimetres. I'm going to cut off there. So 
going to take the two ends of the 0.4 wire and group them together to find the center point. So I'm going to take the center point around my finger to make a loop. I'm going to bring that loop, really shorten it so that the loop gets much smaller. I'm going to take up one of my structural wires. I'm going to pop that into the loop so that the crossover is sitting at the bottom. I'm going to pull that loop so it's really taut against that structural wire. I can still move it, but it's a lot of a smaller loop, as you can see there. So I'm going to bring that now so it's sort of a third of the way up from the end. I'm going to really pull that tight now so it's really firm around the stronger wire. And this is where we might come back to our little sizing wire. And we can check there so we know that this is the amount that we need to weave. So if we have a look, and we're going to try and center that so that we go from the end, we've got our, we're going to have our woven section there, section there and we'll have the other end. So I'm going to try and get it so it's fairly even. So I can move that up a little bit. So I'm now going to support the structural wire on my finger and bring that over. And again, that wire to the other side. I'm going to pick up now one of my other structural wires and place that on the one side. And I'm going to wrap with this wire. I'm going to wrap twice around the two wires. So I'm going to go over and underneath and bring round and again over and underneath and bring round. I'm going to push those together and just squash them up with my nail. I'm going to take the next, the third structural wire and place that on the other side. I'm going to pick up the other wire and I go twice now around this wire that I've introduced and the middle wire. So I'm going to forget this wire for the moment. So I'm going to wrap twice around the two wires. So over and bring round and over and bring round. And again, I'm going to push up. I'm going to come back to this side. So again, I'm going to forget this wire, move that out of the way. I'm not going to do anything with that one for the moment. We're just going to concentrate on these two. I'm just going to take the weaving wire and wrap twice around two wires and bring round. And then swap. So we're going to forget about this wire now. And we're just going to concentrate on these two. And I'm going to wrap twice around the two wires. So again, all the way around and bring to the top and bring round. So the weaving pattern is always that you wrap twice around two wires and that central wire, this one here, either goes along with this wire or it goes along with that wire. So it always goes with one or the other. So we know we've done two wraps around these two. So our next move is to move the central wire so it's now grouped with this wire. And again, I'm going to wrap twice around those two wires. So you'll be able to see now how that pattern is starting to build up. So you can see that section there. So the weave is doing a couple of things. It's a decorative element, but it's also binding the three structural wires together. So you need to continue that weave all the way 
and keep comparing the sizing until you've done the full length of your little size guide. And what you'll end up with is a woven section like that. So you can see it's just that wrapping the two structural wires with two wraps. So what we can do now, because we've got our woven section, so all our wires are very, very secure and held together. And we're just going to shape now to get the ring itself. So I'm going to pop the woven section against the ring mandrel and start to bend around. So I'm going to keep bending and pushing. And when I get to about that point, so we've still got a gap here, I'm going to start to separate out these wires. I'm going to take it off the ring mandrel because we want these wires to be in a set order. So I'm just going to open them out slightly so that we can see the gap in between. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to alternate. So I've got the one wire from the one side then the one wire from the other side. One wire from this side, gone over, and then one wire from this side. So I'm alternating the wires so they're crisscrossing over and bringing down. See if you can see, they've all crisscrossed. So now that I'm, when I know that they're crisscrossing in the right place, I'll pop it back onto the ring mandrel and really start to push against it to, to get my full circle. And you can see I've left the tails of the weaving wire. I'm just going to start to bring that, bring it closer and closer so that I've got the right size. And remember that the wire will spring back a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to lock it in place. So I'm going to take, the, take it off the ring mandrel for a moment. And now I'm going to hold here. I'm going to take out the wire that's at the end on the one side. I'm going to bring that, so I'm going to take now, so really, really pull it tightly, I'm going to take the top wire, so if I move them all out of the way, I'm going to take that top wire and bring that so that it's swirling all the way around and locks into place that one side. So I'm going to take the other wire from the opposite way on the outside and do exactly the same. I'm going to swirl round so that it locks in place all of the wires. So I've gone one full circle around and you can see now that they're slightly shorter but that now has locked the ring shank in place. So if we move those out the way should be able to see that a little bit clearer. So we can now get rid of these two wires and this is where the little tails of the weaving wire come in. So I'm just going to go in and start to form a little bit of a curve and this can be added detail on the ring shank. So I've just got a little bit of a curve I'm going to take my snips and just cut off because um, I want to form a loop. I'm going to use my round nose pliers and just support it and turn a loop. So that's now getting rid of one of the wires. So I'm going to take the tail that's nearest there and go through that loop that I've just made and bind that down nice and tightly onto the ring shank. And go through 
And I can do that a couple of times so that, that now sits that's nice and flush against the side of the woven section. I'm going to leave that for a minute and do exactly the same on the other side. So it's the reverse, so I'm going the other way with the curve. I'm bringing around. I'm going to snip off and make my loop. So again, I'm supporting it and rolling my wrist to make the loop. I'm going to take the other tail and attach it. So going through the loop and bring that down firmly against the ring shank, against the woven section and bring it through. So we've now got rid of two of the wires. So the remaining wires are what we're going to use to create our prongs to hold the Swarovski element in. And if you need to, you can go in and just squash down the little loops because you want to make sure that all of that is neat and tidy before we start to set the stone. So I'm now going to just splay all of these, the four wires out. And I can now get rid of these, the tails. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to come around and start to wrap and just coil that wire around one of the wires. So I've done that a few times and I can go in with my cutters and just trim off. So I'll do that on the opposite side and go in and coil round, push up and trim off. And again, if you've got any little ends, sharp ends, just go in with your chain nose pliers and squeeze down. So what you're looking to do now is get a nice even spacing with the four wires. And those four wires are going to hold the stone. So if we turn the stone over, what we're looking to do is we're looking to get the wires so that they're hitting at the point here, nice and evenly across all the corners. So we might need to just move and adjust slightly. And we're looking to center the ring shank against the middle of the stone. So what we can do is I'm going to cut off to about an inch. And that's going to give me enough to go at the back of the Swarovski crystal. So do exactly the same on the other two that are left. So about an inch. So I'm going to look from the front now and pop it in. And you can see they're much longer than they actually need to be. But what we'll do, we're going to hold now. So I'm going to put pressure. So I'm supporting it with my thumb and my finger, so pushing it against the Swarovski. And I'm going to push up just a little bit so we start to get a little angle. And I go all the way along so that I can see whereabouts, when I take it off, whereabouts it's sitting. So then I'm going to go in and just trim off again, probably to about half a centimetre after that bend. I'm going to start now on each prong with my round nose pliers, just to create a little loop at the end. So I've got it right at the tip and I start to bend in. I'm going to do that on all of them, bending nicely in. And you can either do half a loop like that, or you could do a full loop. 
Just have a look you'd like. And start to bring round. So when you pop your Swarovski, we're really going to go in and support it now. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure with my thumb. I'm going to start to bring round. So I pop my round nose pliers into the loop. And I make sure that I'm really happy with how secure it is. I'm going to start to bend around. So I'm getting really nice tension on that wire. And I do the opposite side. So I've done this side. I'm going to bring round and do the next side. So I'm just taking the loop and bending it in. And again, to get that tension at the back. And bring in. I'm now going to work on this side. Again, so I'm going in with my round nose pliers, bringing it really close, get that tension. We'll do the opposite side. Bring round, bring that loop in, and pull really quite firmly towards you. So you've now got a secure stone and setting. So everything is in and secure. So if you needed to, you could pop it if you need to resize it, or if the ring shank for any reason has come out of shape, you can just pop that back onto the ring mandrel and just twist and slide to make it slightly larger. But you can see now that you've got your secure setting for your Swarovski. And that's your Swarovski ring.